Hello everyone, so my name is uh, Jean Le Benray. Uh, so I'm here with my colleague uh, Pierre-Olivier Jandot. Hello. And uh, so we work at uh, EOMIS Engineering and we are going to, uh, to make a presentation on, on heat transfer in electrical machines. First, I'm going to briefly uh, present you your, our company. So we are um, a company which is based in Lille, in north of France, and we are doing applied research um, in electrical machines. So we are a, a team of uh, R&D engineers with different skills in electrical engineering, in um, vibroacoustics. That's also why we present tomorrow a webinar on noise and vibration uh, in electrical machines, but also we work in heat transfer and scientific computing fields. And we work mainly abroad for all the different applications involving electrical machines. So um, I will now uh, briefly present our services. So we do uh, consulting services uh, to solve uh, technical issues. And um, the special things about AOMIS engineering is that we can do both uh, simulation and measurements. So we have all the equipment to make measurements. We uh, can also work on the design optimization of electrical machines, and we provide technical trainings, uh, more especially on noise and vibration of electrical machines. And at the end, we have also uh, a software. Uh, so we develop and, and distribute a simulation software for electrical machines, which is called Manatee. And it has a special uh, feature of calculating uh, electromagnetics, but also noise and vibration and heat transfer of electrical machines. So we, we can work both uh, during design stage of electrical machines and after manufacturing. So now I will let uh, Pierre-Olivier Jandot uh, start the session on heat transfer. Thank you, Jean. So uh, in this webinar, we'll have an overview of uh, heat transfer in electric machines. So we'll start uh, by a brief introduction on uh, basic concepts of uh, heat transfer. And then we'll uh, study more in detail the different types of architectures and topologies for, uh, it, uh, for cooling of uh, electric machines. Then we'll see the different simulation techniques uh, for uh, heat transfer of, of uh, electric machines. And then we'll conclude. So first, uh, we'll, st we'll uh, start to, to see why is heat management important in an electric machine. So temperature levels impact directly the lifetime of the machine. For example, you can see on the slide the, um, an overheated uh, windings in the machine. High temperature increase the fatigue of the material. And each machine has an insulation class for its winding. So you can see the graph of uh, insulation cl classes on the right. And um, giving for each, uh, each uh, insulation class an operating temperature. The basic rule of thumb for uh, the lifetime of a machine is uh, if the machine works at uh, its operating temperature, it's at tw around 20,000 hours <laughs> of lifetime. And uh, the lifetime di is divided by two for each 10 degrees over the, this temperature and multiplied by two for each degrees below. So it's very important um, for the, the reliability of the machine. And it also impacts directly the magnetization of uh, permanent magnets, so for PM ma machines. So it's important to control the temperature for them. It's also uh, very important for the efficiency of the machine. First, in a machine, the joule losses, which are due to the electric current in conductors, are directly oriented to uh, the electric uh, resistance of the, the material, and its resistance uh, evolves, increases with temperature. So higher temperatures mean higher losses. And for PM machines, uh, you can also uh, find studies uh, which show that uh, increasing the temperature in the machine will decrease the efficiency uh, with uh, up to 5%. Even investing uh, in the cooling system optimization at the design stage of the machine can give uh, significant long-term cost savings. So now we'll see some uh, basics uh, of heat transfer in electric machines. Uh, 
an electric machine for, uh, from a heat transfer point of view is very complex. It, uh, it involves several phenomena, including uh, conduction, so heat inside the solid part of the machine, convection, so heat dissipated by air or a fluid, and radiative heat transfer, which is the uh, electromagnetic radiation produced by the heat of the machine. So heat is generated in the machine by losses, for example, two losses, like we saw just a moment ago. And the general rule is that heat always flow from the hottest point of the machine to the lowest. So now we'll go more in detail so about uh, to see a conductive heat transfer. So conduction occurs inside the body. Any body uh, has conduction inside and depends on the thermal conductivity, so we will not hear a lambda. In an homogeneous body, it respects uh, simple PDE. Uh, the Fourier is low, uh, so it's, uh, you can see the expression here. Uh, what it means is for an equivalent heat flux, uh, higher thermal conductivity means a lower temperature gradient, so lower temperature levels. You can see on the right some uh, typical values for uh, thermal conductivity for several materials. And it has one analogy, uh, an electric analogy, can be uh, compared to Ohm's law, where temperature is, is, would be voltage and conductivity would be the electric conductivity. Most of the time, electric insulators are also good thermal insulators so with low thermal conductivity. And one of the best insulators is air. And when it's not moving, when it's not moving, and if there is an air motion, we'll go to convective heat transfer. So convective heat transfer occurs in case of a moving fluid on a solid body. And it respects the Newton's law. So here you still have the heat flux. And you see it's linearly dependent on the temperature that, uh, difference between solid and fluid. And the coefficient h is called the convective heat transfer coefficient. And it rates the convective heat transfer. When we speak of fluid, it can be either a gas, for example, air, or a liquid, for example, water or oil. And there are two kinds of, of convection. Natural convection, where the fluid motion is due to thermal gradients, for example, water balloons. Or forced convection, when the fluid motion is due to an external source, for example, a fan. This is the main method to cool electric machines. So on the right, you can see typical values for the H coefficients. For example, for air, uh, in natural convection, it can go up to 10. For forced convection, it can be up to uh, 300. And for water, it can go up to 10,000. The last uh, way to, to dissipate heat in a machine is radiative heat transfer. It's based on uh, the fact that each body emits electromagnetic radiation depending on its temperature levels. So it's, uh, so it's a contactless heat transfer. Uh, bodies are modeled using a gray, the gray body law. And uh, it's a highly nonlinear law, which you can see because of the power of four uh, on the temperature. And we have two constants, one the Stefan, Bo Stefan Boltzmann constant, which remains constant, and the emissivity, epsilon, which depends, uh, depends on the body. So uh, emissivity is very low for reflective surfaces like polished metals and strongly depends on uh, surface finish. Uh, radiative heat transfer is often neglected inside the machine because of the low temperature differences and low absolute temperature levels. Uh, but it, it can be used, it can be very important uh, as a boundary conditions to see the exchange uh, the, the heat exchange with this environment. And last, we will see some uh, fluid mechanic considerations. So we, uh, a quick uh, overview of some uh, quantities used for heat transfer uh, from fluid mechanics. So uh, we will use average velocity of the fluid. So we will not hear U, U0. We'll use also the volume flow rate through a section S. So it's just the average velocity multiplied by the section. And between two points of a circuit, the flow rate is kept constant. 
there is also the pressure of the fluid, P in Pascal. So between two points of uh, the same circuit, the, um, the mechanical energy is kept and, and uh, expressed by the Bernoulli equation you can see on the slides. When, when we introduce here a term called delta P, the head loss or pressure drop, which represents the energy loss due to friction. And then we have also the hydraulic power, so it's the flow rate multiplied by the head loss, which, uh, which gives uh, the energy consumption of a cooling system. So it's a very important quantity to rate the efficiency of a, of a cooling system. And last for this uh, general consideration on heat transfer and uh, fluid mechanics, we like to use a lot uh, in those two, uh, in fluid mechanics and heat transfer, um, dimensionless numbers to, uh, to study phenomena. Uh, those numbers are uh, for different flow type of fluid. If we have twice the same number, it will mean that the fluid will have the same behavior. So for example, the first one here is the Reynolds number and it rates the, it rates the turbulence of the flow, it, uh, typically in a channel for Reynolds under uh, 1,500, flow will be laminar, and uh, for uh, Reynolds over 3,000, flow will be turbulent. So turbulence means a very chaotic flow, where laminar is a very steady flow. We have also the nascent number, which rates the um, convective heat transfer, so it will be very important for, for, the, for the cooling of electric machine. And often in scientific literature, you can find the correlations for this number, and, with, uh, and they are linked often to the Reynolds number. Then we can find also pressure drop coefficients, which is the head loss divided by the kinetic energy of the flow and is often also given by correlations to, to estimate the head losses. And last, the friction factor with the kind of pressure drop coefficient, and uh, it gives the energy due to regular uh, friction along, for example, a pipe. So uh, in laminar flow, so the steady flow, it's a simple um, expression, 64 divided by Reynolds, and for turbulent flow, it's, it becomes quite more complicated. Uh, charts must be used, so you have an example on the right, uh, to determine this factor. Then the, the next important part for heat transfer in machines are losses. So heat in the machine is generated by electromagnetic and mechanical losses, and the losses distribution depends on the on, man, on the machine topology, load and supply conditions. So there are four main kinds of uh, losses. The Joule losses, generated by electric currents. The coal losses, so here when we will speak of coal losses, we will include hysteresis, eddy current, and stray losses located in the laminations of the machine. Then there are magnet losses due to eddy currents located in the magnets and then mechanical losses, including friction and windage losses. So first, the Joule losses usually are the most important source of losses in an electric machine. For example, on the graph on the right, you can see for a low-rated power motor, it's like 80% of the losses. And they are located in windings or rotor bars for induction machines, and are usually dissipated for the stator with convection on the head windings. Uh, they are very temperature dependent. As we saw earlier, uh, the resist, uh, electric resistance depends on temperature. And here you have uh, an example of uh, the Joule loss equation with the uh, frequency terms. So on the left part, you have the DC component. And on the right part, you have the resistance uh, for skin and proximity components. The next type of loss are the core losses, usually the second sources of loss in a machine, and are located directly in, on, uh, in stator and rotor cores. They combine two phenomena, eddy currents and hysteresis losses, 
and uh, modeling is very, way more challenging than dual losses in, a, in its uh, current uh, topic, research topic in the scientific community. So here I show the Steinmetz equation, which takes harmonic components into account for the core losses, with on the left part the part with the uh, hysteresis losses, and on the right part of the equation, eddy losses part. The last type of losses, for electromagnetic losses, are magnet losses, which can be very critical in some topologies, despite the fact that they can be, uh, 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 the absolute value can be way lower than the rest, because magnets are often isolated inside the machine, for example, in, inside on the net magnet machines. So the, the heat generated at, at the spot is, um, is not uh, well dissipated. And uh, as we saw earlier, the temperature of the magnets are a very critical element for the efficiency of machines. So they are an important, uh, they are, can be very critical. And here I show uh, an equation for magnet losses for a surface permanent magnet with the rectangular magnets. So taking into account the, 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 the frequency and the harmonic components. And the last main source of losses are mechanical losses. We'll split here in two kind of losses. First, the bearing losses, which uh, depend on the frictional moment and the rotation speed. We'll not go much into details, but for some applications, uh, for example, wind turbines, uh, an impotent cooling system can be needed just for the bearings. And for air friction losses, they are caused by the aerodynamic dra drag or turbulent structures inside the machine, and they are often neglectable at low speed. But for high peripheral velocity, they can be very, very important. For example, you can see an example of the right of a quite small machine, a 100 watt machine, working at 500 k RPM. And you can see that PD is the total losses of the machine, a PF, the friction losses, and the friction losses represent almost half, half the, um, the total losses. And you can see the, the equation for a rotating smooth cylinder. And you can see the two critical terms, one, uh, the, the rotation speed at power 3 and the radius of the cylinder at power 4, showing the importance of the peripheral velocity. So now, after this uh, quick overview of uh, the, the basics of heat transfer in an uh, electric machine, we'll uh, see uh, the different cooling topology that exists in uh, electric machines, and we'll uh, see some tips to design a cooling system. First, we'll start by standards. When you buy a machine on the market, you will always have a um, designa designation of uh, its uh, cooling uh, uh, of its cooling circuit. So the, the slight bug in the in the slides uh, in the um, in the um, in the figure. Um, so we'll see it's a s series of uh, n uh, letter and numbers. So the first two letters are IC, meaning international cooling, and then. Uh, the second number is the circuit arrangement for the, uh, the cooling circuit. So, for example, zero means open circuit, four means frame cooled circuit. And then we have the nature and the circuit for both primary coolant and secondary coolant. So, primary coolant is the coolant directly in contact with the machine. Most of the time, it will be air. And secondary coolant is the coolant for the primary coolant. So um, the first letter is the letter of uh, the, the type of primary current. So A means air, W means water, U means oil. And the second number means the, the topology of the circuit. So zero means free convection, one self-circulation. And the other means um, that an independent, independent system is installed on the machine. Same things for secondary uh, current and circuits. So we we'll now uh, see uh, several cooling architectures, starting by open machines. In, uh, in an open machine, air is directly drawn for, from its environment by its opening, so with uh, actual openings. 
and is directly rejected in this environment by radial opening. Fans can be mounted on the rotors, and they are, it's a very, very uh, widely used for car alternators. For example, from Bosch and Delphi, you can see on the, the right side. Um, the, the advantages of this uh, architecture are it's a very local system, which doesn't need an external power source with high reliability, and it provides good cooling of the end windings because air is directly drawn in, into them. <laughs> The, their main uh, drawbacks is it's highly influenced by uh, the outer environment, for example, external temperature, uh, dirt, etc. And we have no control of the cooling because the flow is induced by the rotation of the rotor. Then we have the self-ventilated machines. So it means they are totally enclosed. You can see a small uh, schematics uh, on the bottom part of the slide. Uh, the air motion is induced by the rotation of the rotor, and a fan can blow air on the outer surface of the machine. So it's a very common architecture for low voltage motors. It's, uh, uh, it's, it can be found ev everywhere, and uh, fins are often placed on the surface to increase uh, the exchange surface. So it's, uh, you have an example of an ABB motor on the right but it's not uh, suitable for high power density machines because it's, uh, the, the cooling power is not enough. For higher power density machines, we'll use more actual and ra radial cooling circuits. So in those cases, air is taken from the outside or from a, from a circuit, uh, an air circuit from a heat exchanger, for example, and follow either an actual path on a, or a radial path. In the actual path air is taken from one side, goes through the rotor instator in the air gap, and is rejected to the other side. And for radial cooling, uh, air is uh, drawn from each side and goes through uh, rotor and stator channels radially and goes out. Um, the main advantage is the good, it provides a good cooling inside the stator and rotor laminations. But uh, and the control of uh, and we can control the, the the fans because they are independent from the machines. The drawbacks are that uh, an heat exchanger is often needed to cool the air circuit, and uh, an air power uh, is needed to for the cooling in general. And uh, both actual and radial cooling can be mixed. For example, you can have radial. Uh, cooling channels with an actual topology. It's okay. It works too. And then for even higher power density machines, air is not enough and liquid cooling is needed. So liquid generally means either water or oil. And you can find two main topologies. So water jackets, where the, there is a water circuit. For example, you can see some topologies on the bottom left. Uh, in the housing of the machines. And um, you can also have dots, uh, so you can see a schematic also on the bottom of the, the slide, uh, going, for example, in the stator and uh, with uh, water flowing inside. So it's very effective cooling. So, for example, here I have two examples of a motor, uh, electric motor for cars, one for racing car and the other one for a Porsche Carrera. And, um, it's very effective because of the liquid state of the coolant, coolant but it requires high pumping power, so it's, uh, it con uh, consumes a lot of energy. And then we have other cooling devices. For example, um, there are some uh, machines with old jets and sprays, uh, with heating in jets, for example, on the end windings which gives a very, very good cooling for the, the windings of the machines. So, for example, here it's a schematics from um, cooling on a Renault project. And uh, you have also, more and more, it's uh, heat pipes cooling. So heat pipes are passive cooling devices using phase change phenomena, mostly used for electronics, for example, for cell phones, for laptops. And uh, it's more for high-end applications in terms of electric machine because it's uh, 
uh, extensive, but it's very effective and relay reliable. So mostly used for aerospace, uh, for example. So for example, you can see a concept of a stator cooled by uh, heat pipes on the, the periphery. Or you can see uh, a topology patented by Tesla for rotor cooling with eight pipes on the right. Now we have seen the different uh, topology. Uh, time to it's time to ask questions. How to choose between uh, all these uh, these different architectures? There is no uh, sadly there is no uh, miracle uh, answer, but some general considerations we have to take into account are what are the loss distribution in the machine? Where are the loss generated? Where are the critical temperatures? And what is the required power density of the machine? So uh, on this slide, you can find a small table with the uh, basic rules of thumb for choosing uh, a cooling system based on current density of the machine. For low current density, you can use free convection and totally enclosed machines. So, a slightly higher up to 5 and uh, to 10 uh, ampere per millimeter square. You, you can use air force convection. And for higher current density, uh, liquid cooling is needed. And now also we can have some uh, general tips to, for how to improve convectivity transfer. So, uh, we can see by just looking at the equation of uh, convectivity transfer, there are several terms. First, on the left, the total losses of the machine. So if we want to improve the temperature, it seems obvious that uh, reducing the losses to a better electromagnetic design of the machine can be useful. On the right part, we have the temperature difference between the solid, so the temperature we want to minimize and the temperature of the coolant. So uh, an obvious also uh, solution is to reduce the temperature of the coolant. So it means, for example, a better heat exchanger. And the main point of its interest is the H dot S uh, term, which is the convective conductance. So H is the convective heat transfer coefficient. And to increase it, you need to increase fluid velocity or change the nature of coolant. And um, S, to increase S, you need to add fins, for example, like total enclosed uh, machine, or add, for example, new cooling passes like ventilation ducts and near the, the critical parts of your machines. And another, uh, another good practice is to design a cooling system are which objective, uh, to, what are the objectives to take? Um, Always keep in mind the energy, energy cost of a solution, uh, because if you improve the efficiency of the machine but decrease the, uh, but increase also the energy cost, the uh, balance has to be to, to be found. And for a closed circuit, the energy cost is given by the hydraulic power divided by both the mechanical efficiency of the pump or fan and the electrical efficiency. And a good cooling doesn't mean the lowest possible temperatures everywhere. It's important to focus on critical parts of the machine. So for example, windings, we should respect the operating temperatures of the insulation class, for example, by taking a safety margin of 10 degrees. And magnet temperature, we should be far from their demagnetization threshold. But to design all this, we need um, fast and accurate simulation tools. So it's, it's the topic of the last part of this uh, webinar, where we will see which, what kind of methods we have to simulate uh, heat transfer in the electric machine. We'll see some general consideration on it. And we'll finish by a brief overview of the different existing software. So there are, uh, the electric machines are complex systems combining both heat transfer and fluid mechanics. And we can find three main techniques uh, of increasing degree of complexity to, to simulate them. So the first is uh, the Lumpur method thermal networks. 
using a zero distillation uh, with uh, electric uh, using an electric uh, analogy. Second one is uh, a finite element simulation uh, inside the solid part of the body of the the machine. And last part, is, uh, the last solution is full CFD simulation, so computational fluid dynamics solution, where both fluid and solid parts of the machine are solved. So we'll start by lumped parameter thermal networks. So based on the electrical analogy, the machine is divided in small isothermal volumes linked by thermal conductances and which depend on the nature of the heat transfer. So for example, here you can see the expression for a conductive conductance and for a convective conductance. It gives us, in the end, uh, two equations, one for unsteady, the other for steady state. And in steady state, the, the equation becomes a simple linear system, so it's quite easy to solve. It's very fast and simple, simple and easy, for example, to program yourself for small uh, models. But empirical and analytical correlations are needed to determine the convective equation, so the H you can see in uh, G-comp. The second method is to uh, simulate using finite element uh, method the solid parts of the machine. So here we solve the heat equation directly on those solid parts. So the main advantage is its uh, local uh, resolution, so we can find potential hotspots in the machine, and it's easily coupled with electromagnetic FEM calculations. But like LPTM, so Lumped Parameter Thermal Networks, uh, empirical data or correlations uh, for boundary conditions are needed, and the accuracy and the, of the results depend greatly on them. It can be solved both in 2D or 3D, but uh, contrary to uh, electromagnetic problems, uh, its transfer problems are often 3D. And last, we can have the full CFD simulation. So in, in this, uh, this kind of simulation, heat equation is still solved like uh, the previous one, but we had also Navier-Stokes equations, so the, the fluid equations, which are Quite, uh, quite complicated, as you can see. The expression is quite complicated, highly nonlinear. And uh, usually, especially in turbulent state, and usually we use a lot of uh, modeling to reduce the, um, the, 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 the mesh size required, for example. Um, its computation cost can be very high, so it's, uh, it's measured in hours or even days. And um, the, the steady state computation are often not an option because uh, the unsteady sorry, state uh, computations are often not an option because of the, the, the computation time. The main advantage is that no correlation or empirical data are needed, but uh, accuracy can also be a problem depending on the models used inside the, the, the calculation. So to summarize the different techniques, all the techniques are complementary. Uh, LPTN, so uh, thermal networks, are ideal for early stage design, for quick uh, computations, for example, for optimization. FEM are good to detect hotspots without modeling everything in a machine. And CFD doesn't need any empirical data, but have, uh, has a very high computation times and can be, for example, used to validate one uh, thermal network model. And in the end, all these methods can be combined. For example, you can use CFD to determine in some specific locations the heat transfer coefficients and to reuse the results in, for example, a thermal network. Now we'll see some um, uh, some problems you can uh, encounter in a uh, uh, thermal simulation of electric machine. First is the anisotropy of materials. Um, and two, two sources of uh, potential errors are, for example, the windings modeling, because windings are often uh, modeled as uh, just one material, one uh, homogeneous material. 
that's uh, winding are just a combination of copper wires and insulation uh, material, where copper is a very good thermal conductor and electric insulators are very bad thermal conductors. So in the end, you, have also, you need to consider it by introducing different uh, conductivity on the radial and tangential uh, side and on the axial side with way lower levels of uh, radial and tangential, uh, tangential conductivity. Uh, the same happens for laminations, where cores are constituted by uh, steel sheets packed with uh, insulation layers between them. So as a result, uh, actual conductivity for laminations is way lower than tangential and radial conductivities. There is also uh, the problem of steady versus unsteady simulations, because we are mostly spoken here of uh, steady simulation. Um, you have to know that to reach thermal steady state, takes way, uh, the time is way higher than, uh, for example, electromagnetic steady state. For, for example, a uh, wind turbine generator, it can be reached in 10 hours, 12 hours. And for non-constant loads, for example, car motors or wind turbines, steady state is uh, al almost never reached. So it's not enough. And um, CFD, on this case, is often not an option because, uh, like we said earlier, it takes too much time, too much computation resources. And for, for example, thermal network, we use an uh, non-steady equation introducing a capacitance matrix which depends on the thermal capacity of the materials. And those thermal capacities are, have often high uncertainties uh, because they are often a, a mix of materials. So uh, experimental validation is always needed. Um, we can see now some sources of uh, typical uncertainties and, uh, of thermal simulations. Uh, first, uh, to have a good thermal simulation, we need a good electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic simulation to calculate losses and their location. Uh, boundary conditions need to be as precise as possible, especially using uh, correlations for LPTN or FEM. And for each method, mesh is very important. A finer mesh is needed in zones of high temperature gradients. For example, on the right, you can see an example between LPTN results and FEM simulation with a very fine mesh for a, a thermal net, network method. And we can see we can uh, have the same, almost the same results using two uh, very different methods. Another thing is contact resistance. It's very important. By default, contact is assumed perfect. But for example, between a stator and, a, and the housing, and its housing, the, the contact is almost never perfect with small layers of air, uh, small, uh, so for the simulation, we need to add, for example, layers of air to simulate the, the, the bad contact between them. Um, some uncertainties can come from the difference between CAD and real geometry, for example, simplifications, uh, made to, to, to the, for the simulations. And even the, the, the more precise model, so CFD, has uh, an uncertainty of plus or minus five degrees. So um, it's, uh, it's very important to always have all, uh, an experimental validation. Now we'll finish uh, this, this part with uh, an overview of the existing software. So we'll start by commercial software. Uh, for example, for Lamper Metal Thermal Network, you have MotorCAD and Speed. Uh, uh, by the way, it's not an exhaustive list. Um, uh, so um, for FEM, you can find uh, in MotorSolve a good uh, thermal module. And most, also, most of the FEM package for electromagnetic have a thermal module, like Flux, Gmag, Opera. And some popular CFD package are the Fluence FX by NSYS, Star CCM Plus, et cetera, et cetera. 
And you can find also uh, free software, open source software, that, has, that are not fully dedicated for, uh, for electric machines, but can be very useful if you need a low cost uh, in terms of price solution uh, to, to make these calculations. For example, for CAD, you can add free CAD or Salome. Uh, for 2D FEM, you have FEMM. For 3D FEM, you have uh, GetDP, for example. And the, uh, for the CFD package, the reference is OpenFOAM. So now I will conclude uh, this webinar. So we, we saw that uh, better cooling means higher efficiency, extended lifetime, and uh, lower of overall, co overall cost. Sorry. And the cooling must be considered at the early electromagnetic design stage, similarly to noise and vibration. So I invite you to, to assist tomorrow to the, the webinar, which will be presented by uh, Jean and my colleague Margot Renier, tomorrow, same time. And the simulations method for each transfer must be chosen depending on your objectives. For example, lens parameters network is for early design, and FEM or CFD for detailed design. And the simulation, thermal simulation workflow must be adapted and coordinated with the EM and uh, mechanical design workflow. For example, um, with lens parameters met method, you can use uh, the reluctance method for electromagnetic simulations. Or for CFD, you can go as well for, with complex 3D uh, EFM simulation. And experiments should always uh, be used to regularly check and improve model behavior. And uh, in the end, the design of the of, uh, electric machine is always uh, multi-objective optimization. Uh, if we speak only in thermal, uh, in terms of thermal design, it will be always the, the temperature compared to the cost of the solution. And for coupled electromagnetic and thermal design, we have to lower the temperatures without uh, reducing the, the, the electromagnetic performances. Uh, uh, so here is a list of uh, references uh, I've used uh, during this presentation. And thank you for, for your attention, and if you have any questions.